All right, this is it. I've been teasing an announcement video for a while, and uh, well, as you can tell by the title, I'm not gonna be going back to school next year. I do plan on returning after one year, and I'm gonna be talking about what I'm gonna be doing and why I'm doing it uh, in this video. Uh, but I wanna start off just by saying that this is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. I wasn't asked to leave for any reason, you know, disciplinary, grades, whatever. This is purely voluntary. This is me thinking that this is the right move for myself, given where I'm at in life right now. Uh, and I'm gonna justify that, but I wanna start off just by, you know, quelling any rumors uh, that, you know, my grades are too low or that I, you know, got in trouble or anything like that. None of that. This is a good thing. This is voluntary. Um, and truthfully, I'm like, I'm incredibly excited. So. Here are the, the three major reasons why I'm going to be taking the year off. Okay, so academic-wise, I am doing computer science, and uh, I'm about four credits away from getting my computer science degree, at minimum. I could take more if I chose to, but uh, in order to get my degree, I only need to take four more classes. And I have two years left, which means 16 classes as a minimum. And well, what that really means is that I have 12 credits to play with. And those 12 credits I could use potentially to get a dual major in some other subject I could use to figure out a minor. Uh, or I could just take a bunch of electives. Or I could go all in on computer science. All of these things are viable options. And truthfully, I'm not sure which option uh, is the best for me. Which one is going to be the most fulfilling in terms of studying and post-college. And I don't really want to rush into this decision. I could, you know, just choose a path and go down it. Um, but I feel like it's a really good opportunity for me right now to take a step back, having essentially completed my degree, and figure out, you know, what's the next step for me academically, especially because my academic interests are changing. When I entered into college, I was very computer science centric, and now I'm moving further away from that. I obviously have found this interest in film, uh, but I've also found an interest in psychology. And so during this next year, I'm gonna be doing some work in both of those fields. So I'm gonna be working hopefully in a lab uh, for doing some psychology research, uh, and I'm gonna be doing some more ambitious film projects, some more ambitious video projects uh, here on YouTube. And the, the goal of this is to just figure out, you know, what is it that I actually want to study so that I can maximize the next two years, the second half of my Harvard education. I learned that I wanted to do computer science because, well, I worked in the professional world of computer science. I was a software developer intern for a couple of summers before I ended up going into computer science in university. And so I knew what I was getting into. In terms of film and psychology, I don't really know what I'm getting into. I've never really been uh, working in you know, an academic circle like that, or I've never really thrown my full weight uh, into doing some film projects, some more ambitious film projects. So I'm excited to do that. And that actually segues pretty well into the second reason why I'm taking the year. Now, one of the things that I haven't liked about college uh, for the first two years that I've been in it is just the increased energy commitment uh, that it takes, mental energy and just time commitment that college takes. It's a, it's a big step up from high school for sure. And so in high school, I would use that time and that energy to work on these fun little side projects that actually eventually ended up turning into to bigger things sometimes. Sometimes, most of the time, they would turn it to nothing, but sometimes, you know, they'd turn into science fair projects or they'd win competitions, etc. And, you know, this is something that is is really uh, rewarding for me. It's something that I really enjoy doing, working on projects um, with you know, my brain, not just little things here and there, not just weekend projects, but things that I can work on for weeks. Having the time and the energy to do that is really important to my personal fulfillment. And while I haven't really prioritized this in college, and more than that, I've kind of felt the urge because in high school, it was fine to be doing these kind of little side projects, but I felt the urge to do bigger projects. And I've had all these ideas and it's just like, man, it would be really great to have some time and some energy to do those things because I haven't had that while I've been in college. That's, you know, you just work hard and, and you, you know, free up time for things like, like YouTube, um, but I haven't freed up more time. And so that's part of what this year is doing is it's freeing up time and energy, mental time and energy for me to pursue these projects, these more ambitious projects in the various aspects of my life. And that'll tie back into the first reason, which is, you know, figuring out my academic passion. But it's not just about, you know, figuring out what I want to do in school. It's also about having fun and being fulfilled and being able to look back on this year and saying like, wow, Wow, I did some cool projects and you know I was able to, to to really progress as a person and really that's that's the third and the final reason why I want to take this year so 
So the first two reasons that I, that I just gave there were pretty practical. They were pretty pragmatic. You know, I want to figure out what I'm going to study when I come back because I do plan on coming back. I'm not dropping out. Uh, and I want to uh, work on more projects, right? Those are both very practical. And the third reason is pretty philosophical in terms of it's not something that I'm going to be doing. It's something that I hope to become. And that's uh, really just a focus on patience and maturity. Towards the end of this past school year, I came to understand that I've been in a rush for like six years. When I was in high school, that rush was to get into university. When I was in university, that rush, you know, is to, to keep up with university, first of all, to, to adapt to this new way of life, and then to graduate and to get into the real world, uh, the real world, as you might say. But I have to ask myself the question, what am I rushing towards, right? And at the end of the day, I, I don't really have a great answer for this yet. And I'm, I'm not anticipating, you know, having one answer by the end of this year. But I think if I don't have that one answer, right, like I don't know that I want to become a neurosurgeon or whatever. Like I know what fields I generally want to work in. I know my talents. I know what makes me, you know, fulfilled and happy as a person. And that's what I'm optimizing for. But because I don't have this one target, there really is no rush. So then the question becomes, you know, without this specific end goal in sight, is it right for me to rush? And I think the answer, at least to me, is obviously no. It's actually right to do the opposite thing and to be patient and to allow myself more time for exploration and more time for maturation. Because I have to understand that I'm a young, naive 19 year old turning 20 soon, but still 19, like I'm still a teenager. I'm still figuring things out about my identity every day and who I wanna be. And I think rushing that process is gonna do me more harm than good. Now, school is definitely a way that I can mature, and I have matured tremendously since I entered school. Like, I think about the person that I was leaving high school and the person who I am today, and there's, you know, been a big progression. I, I think most of it has been for the better in terms of these things, but I've never really been without a safety net. Like, I've always had, you know, either been living with my parents or living with roommates at a school. Like, it's very safe. There's not a huge risk involved with that, and there's not a ton of independence involved with that either. And so I think that this year off is going to be presenting a unique challenge for me, a unique opportunity for me to develop parts of myself and to mature parts of myself that have previously maybe gone, uh, you know, a little unexercised, if you will, right? There are parts of my brain, parts of my behavior that I just haven't used because I've had these safety nets. I think that this will benefit me tremendously as a person. It'll help me to mature. It'll help me to become more patient. And those are things which, truthfully, I've been understanding recently that I've been lacking. But at the same time, it's not without a safety net because I still have a spot waiting for me at the college for me to come back to. I can still go home and see my family. So it's not that I'm taking away, you know, everything and moving to a, a new country with, you know, no internet or anything like that. Like, it's, it's nothing crazy like that, but it's definitely a step beyond where I've been. And I think that that's gonna help me a lot as a person to mature and to become more patient. Those are two of the things that I really am working on right now. Okay, so that is the why, onto the what. You know, what am I actually doing? So officially I'm taking a voluntary leave of absence from Harvard. Uh, and this is something that Harvard does that I think is really cool, where you can just, you know, petition the, it's called the ad board. Um, is it short for administrative board? I'm not sure, but it sounds like it might be. Basically, yeah, administrator is at the school. Uh, and if you're in good academic standing and you have no disciplinary issues, then they generally will approve you for a voluntary leave of absence, which is what I'm doing. And what this means is that I can take time off from school as long as I don't get a degree from any other undergraduate institution or, you know, like commit any crimes or anything like that. Um, then there'll be a spot waiting for me when I would like to return. So this is really cool because it, you know, means that I don't have have to drop out and then come back. It's, I'm still, you know, a student. Uh, I'm just not enrolled at the moment. But I do have the, the guarantee of coming back as long as I don't, you know, do anything too crazy, but it's me. Now, from a funding perspective, I'm gonna be paying for this all by myself. Uh, I've been lucky enough to have worked some great internships in the past that paid really well, as well as having this YouTube channel and the business I built around it with my growth books. And so uh, I'm a relatively frugal person. I don't really, you know, buy fancy things. I don't really care for that. I'm, you know, pretty financially, you know, literate. 
um, and I'm gonna be living in a relatively cheap city. Uh, but I might, you know, be taking more sponsored posts than you might usually see on this channel. I will, you know, not sell out by any means, uh, but I do have some fun sponsored opportunities that are coming up, and that's just, you know, a factor of living, you know, on your own in the real world is more expensive than being a student, so. I'm gonna cover it with this channel and with the business and, and other stuff that I might be doing work-wise, but fret not. And speaking of which city I'm gonna be moving to, I'm gonna be moving to Montreal in Quebec. Uh, and, you know, for those of you who know me, you'll know that I am Canadian. Uh, I, you know, grew up in Waterloo, Ontario. Um, and Montreal for me is just a really great city because it's a mixture of uh, this new kind of technology wave. It's one of the, the hubs for AI, which is what I'm personally interested in computer science uh, in Canada, uh, which gives me the opportunity to work on some pretty cool projects with some pretty cool people in that field. Uh, as well as just being like a beautiful place culturally. It has a lot of history, a lot of rich, you know, art and music culture, uh, and there are a lot of universities. McGill was actually probably my second pick behind Harvard. It's an amazing school. Um, and so, you know, everything just kind of adds up there. Uh, it's every, you know, check in the box that I would look for in a city. And when I've gone there in the past, I went there for a National Science Fair in 20... 16, maybe 2017. When I went there, uh, I just fell in love with it. And so that's where I'm gonna be spending the year. All right, so I think that's the end of the video. Uh, to sum it all up, I'm gonna be moving to Montreal where I'm gonna be working uh, to figure out what I wanna do academically when I return to Harvard, uh, be it psychology, film, more computer science. And to do so, I'm gonna be working on more ambitious projects than I've ever worked on in all of those fields. And at the same time, I'm gonna be taking a year to allow myself to grow as a person, to challenge myself in ways that I haven't challenged myself before, to fail a lot, and hopefully, as a result, to grow a lot. I think that's what I'm most excited for. It's just, you know, the opportunity to to try and do things that I've never been able to try and do before. Uh, and I know it's not all gonna work out. It's gonna be, you know, lots of ups, lots of downs, but uh, that's just kind of life, isn't it? Like, I'm, I'm just pumped for this. So if you wanna follow along, I'm gonna be uploading more kind of lifestyle stuff as I move in, as I figure out my new life in Montreal. Uh, so please do follow along by subscribing. Uh, it means a lot to me turning on notifications because subscriptions are broken. You can also find me on Instagram at thejohnfish where I'm gonna be posting regular updates in my life in Montreal. And finally, if you yourself live in Montreal, please send me a message because I don't have friends in Montreal and I'm probably gonna be lonely for a while. I'll make friends, but like, you know, I'm kind of just moving to a city full of strangers. So it's gonna be fun. Okay, <laughs> thanks for watching. I will see you in about a week, uh, but I won't be here. I'll be in Montreal.